Well, um, welcome to the Billionaire Bash. Um, take that either way. What a party. I mean, um, this is uh, truly wonderful. Uh, this made people interested in taxing. Um, does anybody, is anybody here a billionaire? Do we have any billionaires in the room? Just one, one in the back. Who, anybody want to be a billionaire? <laughs> I hope you're more honest in your voting than you were just then. Uh, and please vote. Make sure you vote. We would really want to hear what you folks think about um, some of these issues around taxes. Um, even though your minds may change later on in the day. Um, but so we're not really here to bash billionaires. Um, I mean, some of my best friends uh, work for billionaires. <laughs> and in fact, I think most of us do in one way or another. Um, even the patriotic millionaires, I'm a member, um, a group of lowly millionaires who want to tax billionaires. Um, <laughs> We're really here today to find the cure for excessive wealth disorder. Now, <clears throat> I myself am a conflicted child, uh, uh, poster child, sorry, poster child for excessive wealth disorder. Uh, I woke up this morning uh, and couldn't decide whether to wear a Brunello Cuccinella t-shirt or an Armani suit. And um, I decided to go incognito with a sport jacket. Um, these are the challenges of being rich, making those decisions. The reasons for increasing the taxes on the very rich go beyond the huge gap in income and wealth, even among the top 0.1% with household income of roughly $2 million or net worth of $50 million. You know, for most people, if you see a quarter on the ground, uh, you, you stoop to pick it up. That's what we call stoop change. Uh, if you're a billionaire, you might not know what a quarter is. And um, I think that is the problem that we're, we're trying to deal with today. Um, I, I think the best way to do this is we've, um, to explain excessive wealth disorder in a slightly lighthearted way, we're going to show a short film that we made and um, see if it makes the point. I wanna be a billionaire so freaking bad Buy all of the things I never had Can you believe all this bashing of billionaires that's going on? They're saying insane things like pay your fair share, eliminate student debt, provide safe water. It's ridiculous. We can't afford that. I can't believe that SOB spent $250 million on a New York City apartment. Find me one for $260 million. Coal futures were up and I made $800,000 an hour without even having to go to work. Love it. Buy me a second jet. Unfortunately, I have some bad news. It says here you have EWD. No, no, no. My doctor gave me pills for that years ago. Not ED. I'm talking about excessive wealth disorder. It's something we see in rich people who make up the top 0.1%, but it's beginning to have an impact on the 99.9% .9 that make up everyone else. You scored off the charts in wealth, political contributions, and government handouts, and about as low as I've ever seen in taxes paid. I'm too smart to pay taxes. That's why I have grats and clats and municipal bonds and- You're missing the point. The rules don't apply to me. Unfortunately, they do. Well, I don't believe you. I didn't want to have to do this, but I guess this is the only way. What in the world? I think you mean when in the world. We're in the year 1983. I'm the ghost of futures past. You mean like gold futures? Is this my hometown? What are we doing here? The Reagan tax cuts just kicked in and you are on the road, the highway to riches. Remember when you wrote the governor a big fat check to get him to lower your state taxes and then build a statue of you in the middle of town? You'll have to be more specific. I've had so many statues made. 1982. The statue had a mullet like the world has never seen. And the money that built your statue was supposed to go towards fixing roads. Why is he so upset? It's just a flat tire. Surely he has a spare car he can use. It's 3 p.m. 
This man's gonna be late for shrimp cocktail hour at the yacht club. Sir, is your butler nearby to help you up? He can't see you. I thought you said everyone can see us. That was the last one. The EWD must be spreading to the brain. I don't have EWD! Why are you showing me this wretched man? He would have been the next Lin-Manuel Miranda, but he never got the chance. Oh, that's the guy who wrote Hamlet, right? Hamilton. Remember the playhouse that showcased up-and-coming writers that your private foundation bought and then only allowed Cats the musical to play? Of course I remember. Well, this man wrote a masterpiece that no one ever saw because of you. And you did the same kind of thing when you bought the local baseball team, driving up prices to make more money, and now parents can't afford to take their kids to games. It's time to go. Is that... me? Yes. This is you in the not-so-far-off future. Why am I crying? This seems ideal. Gold, cash, a toilet. I've got it all! You're crying because you realize that money hasn't bought you happiness. Your greed, your thirst for power, and, quite frankly, your love for feline show tunes has left you alienated from your friends and family. All you have is money. That's great! You're really not getting it, are you? This is your funeral. We're in the year 2040. The president and just about every member of Congress owes you big time. And even though the 0.1% brought economic growth to a complete halt, you've been smoking Cuban cigars for 15 years, ever since you bought Cuba. Sounds pretty great to me. You and your buddies got to run the whole show. You cut taxes and made yourselves richer. You slashed government spending, driving people into poverty, taking away their health care. You eliminated regulations, so opioid and drug use skyrocketed. Now that's a great way to make money. Food was unsafe to eat, guns proliferated, and worst, you ignored the dangers of climate change. But I'm rich. Why did I die? Was it the cigars? Income inequality had skyrocketed. People were mad as hell and weren't going to take it anymore. Oh my god. Will I have to pay estate taxes? <laughs> ah! It's not fair! I took the pledge! Is there any cure for EWD? There may be. If you can be patriotic, show some concern for your fellow citizens, and pay your fair share of taxes. Can I still keep my airplanes? <laughs> Nearly 100 years ago, in 1927, the Supreme Court Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes said, taxes are the price we pay for civilized society. <clears throat> but I like to quote from a book written in 1866, Christian Ethics or the Science of Duty, which said, taxes are what one pays for the protection of one's life and property and for the conditions of public prosperity in which one shares. One ought to pay his portion of the expense of government. Our tax system should promote growth and shared prosperity, what I call GASP. And then you're supposed to GASP, growth and shared prosperity. It should, allow, it should allow the excessively rich to pay their fair share of taxes. I mean, there's not gonna be unilateral surrender. So if we had a change in the tax code, the rich would feel better about paying their taxes. There's a logic. Anyhow, in the process, we need to reduce the influence of excessive wealth in our lives. Think of it this way. I believe in a, the concept of a thousand points of light. Um, but when 999 of those thousand points are candles, and one is the Yankee Stadium night game lighting system, it might be okay for the 999 candles to be in a vigil, but it will always be the stadium lights that determine where the game is going to be played. And uh, it's that gap. Uh, actually, the British do a fantastic job. You know, you go into the underground in uh, London, and it says, mind the gap. I think they've, uh, <laughs> we should try something similar. Uh, <clears throat> we haven't taxed rich people since Reagan lowered the rates. Um, and why is that? Um, I think it falls to two main reasons. The first is that, making, is that we make taxes so complicated. 
We debate the merits of loophole, one loophole versus another. We try to explain what a carried interest loophole is. And we basically scare people with proposals that opponents claim will cost taxpayers their jobs. So I would start by keeping it simple. And the second trap that uh, Paul talked about is that we conflate the 1% with the 0.1%. There is a huge difference, as everyone knows, I think, that in, this, in the circumstances of someone earning $400,000 a year, who for sure is well off, but still very different from somebody who's earning $2 million a year. Even the difference between 1 million and 2 million is significant. So we should stay focused on the excessively rich, starting with those earning over $2 million per year. There should be a pledge, no new taxes, before the top 0.1% pay their fair share. At the end of this incredible journey we're taking together today, I hope you'll come to realize that the problem and the solution is fairly simple. Total reported income of the top 0.1% is $1 trillion. Now, that's a lot of zeros, but it's $1 trillion. And this is just the top 0.1%. And it's just reported income. The question is, and it's a simple question really, how do we most effectively, economically, move some of that $1 trillion from the excessively rich to the common good? Now my vote, and I don't want to prejudice your vote, so, but I'm going to. Uh, <laughs> my vote is the surtax as a starting place, a 10% tax on incomes over $2 million. This could move as much as $75 billion per year from the excessively rich to underwrite universal child care and early childhood education. I mean, do we really need all those yachts? And um, I, I'm thinking of the program as something like Yachts for Youth. Uh, that would be some approach. But seriously, as I said in an op-ed I wrote for Fox Business, uh, yes, Fox Business, if we can put a person on the moon, we can find the cure for excessive wealth disorder. But we better hurry up before the billionaires own the moon. So thank you very much.